I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. When we first bought our house in Union City, it was a big old Victorian farmhouse. And by Victorian, it had uh, stained glass windows and French doors between the living room and the dining room. But it was still a farmhouse. Two stories. The first floor had storm windows, but the upper second floor didn't have any. The windows were a hundred years old. We moved there in 1991 and the house was built in 1891. So trying to find storm windows to fit it was going to be quite a task. So I got the idea that I would just make them. I'd never made storm windows before. I'd repaired windows. I'd glazed them and I had made wooden things, a lot of wooden things. I'd never made any storm windows before. So I bought a book at the at the bookstore. Because back then, 1991, 92, there weren't any internet videos to check on to see how things were done. It was you either knew, or you went and bought a book, or you went and asked somebody who knew. So I bought a book, and I studied it. And then I went out and bought cedar. And I made the first storm window out of cedar, which worked remarkably well. It was straight close grain. And I didn't have any trouble at all making the frame work. I bought a table saw and it was the first time I'd ever owned or used a good table saw. My dad had a table saw that he'd made but it wasn't a good one. It, it worked. But it was a long ways from a good table saw. And the one I bought was a Craftsman, which meant that it was the best I could afford, but it wasn't the best in the world. But I made that first storm window. I painted it while it was hanging in the workshop. I put screws into the main beam in the center of the building. And I hung the windows as I made them on that beam. And I painted them. They look beautiful. Putting them up on the second story was no fun. That was way up in the air. And I was working off the top of a wooden ladder. And I had to lift the windows up and hook them over the hangers. And then fish them up past the ladder. All while I was trying to hold on to the ladder with one hand. And hold on to the window with the other. 
that was quite an experience. After that first cedar window, I made the rest of them out of pine because cedar was expensive. By the time I bought the cedar, bought the glass, and put all of it together, I had a chunk of money in that. The pine wasn't cheap, but it worked. Just had a couple of problems. I had one window that worked on me. And that was a rather frustrating time. But I made it work. I got them hung. And every time I think, every time I'm painting a window, I think about those windows that I made and put all that effort into. And then they hung on the house for 20 years. Every winter I put them up, and every summer I took them down. In my old workshop, it was a hog barn. And the hog barn had a loft where the guy who built the farm had a granary, kind of a corn crib up on one end where he could put the hog feed. And then the main part of the building, he had a loft, like a hay loft. And when I took out the, gray, the grain bin, the corn crib on the end, it left a big hole in the floor. And I thought, well, I'll just fill that in and, and put some rafters in there and fill that in. And I'll have the hole upstairs all be a nice area that I can do things in. But then I got the bright idea, why not turn it into a balcony, like a mezzanine. So as I was reconstructing this hog barn, it was built in uh, 1913. There was a number written into the foundation of the building. I built it with a balcony and a mezzanine. And I put windows up on both ends of the building. Because when it when I first started working on it, there wasn't any windows at all in the upstairs. Both ends were just blank walls. So after building the storm windows, I had enough confidence, I went ahead and built tilt-out windows for the upstairs, tilt-out windows for the downstairs workshop, had a lot of fun doing it. So I've had a lot of practice with windows. And here when Ryan's moving, and we spent almost as much time on his garage as I did on that hog barn, I'm fixing the windows for that too. It's a nice feeling being able to use this skill that I developed. This is a can of Dutch Boy paint and it comes in a plastic bucket. It's kind of nice. It's got a thing in it that I'm not really fond of though. It's got a pour spout, which I guess if you're pouring into a roller pan it's kind of a nice thing. But trying to reach in here and get the paint out of the bucket I spend 
more time trying to get around that spout than what I want to. And the plastic bale is kind of nice. It makes it awkward to hold. And there, two windows painted. The screw on top seemed like a nice idea at the beginning, but once you get a little paint in it, it glues itself down. Not quite so handy. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments below. You know, I read them all. Thanks for watching.